Okay, to start this video off, if you do what I did in this video, you're going to void your CPU's warranty. Now, whether or not you're actually going to need to turn in your CPU because it randomly dies on you halfway through your workload is a different story. I mean, how many people do you really hear of needing to RMA a CPU? Usually if it's dead, it's dead out of the box. I mentioned this again later on in the video, uh, but you should keep that in mind because if you do want that peace of mind, then doing what I'm gonna do here is definitely not advised. Now, with that said, I think that the benefits are worth it and under, I would say, most applications. And the reason being is because most Intel CPU nowadays have terrible thermal interfaces and that is a result of Intel choosing to use very terrible thermal compound between the die and the IHS most of us know this by now it's basically equitable to toothpaste now I'm sure you've seen other prominent tech tubers deal with CPUs on their channels this by no means is a new process it's definitely something we've had to resort to thanks to Intel's choice of terrible Tim but this is the first time I've ever deleted a $2,000 processor and I'm very nervous because I've never used this tool before although I trust for Bauer I mean the, the guy knows exactly what he's doing uh, and this is his tool here that you can buy. I have it linked down below along with a few other DLID tools if you're interested. Uh, so, you know, if I destroy this 18 core, 36 thread, $2,000 chip, I'm kind of screwed because uh, this is the only one I have and you know, I, I, can't, I can't afford $2,000 CPUs. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get to the DLID process. Again, a huge disclaimer, this will void your CPU warranty. If you do what I'm doing with any Intel C, any CPU in general, actually, I mean, if you wanna even DLID like soldered on AMD CPUs with ovens and special DLID kits, you can do that, uh, but you're going to void your warranty. So keep that in the back of your head when watching this video. If you're deciding on whether or not DLIDing is worth it, maybe this will give you the pros and cons, obviously the pros being much lower core temperatures, but the con being it can't turn it if you happen to destroy it. So let's get started. The Sennheiser PC37X is a new take on gaming headsets, prioritizing both a sleek design and optimal comfort, that's a tricky combo there. Audio is top notch as always, that's no surprise, but the microphone here is a thing of beauty. You're actually listening to it right now. Not bad for a plug and play headset. Click the link in the video description for more details. Alright, so the first thing I wanted to do was set up a baseline. Now this is a 7980XC, it's actually an engineering sample, that's why it says Intel Confidential on it. So this isn't one you could just obtain on the open market unless somebody who's not supposed to be selling this sells it on a site like eBay. Uh, but it's for all intents and purposes just a generic 7980XC uh, and actually mine out of the box is not a great overclocker So there's nothing really special about this chip In fact, it's probably on the lower end in terms of binning I was sure to follow the GN approved thermal compound application method That's detailed on their mod mat actually that I'm using right now uh, Just to be consistent granted this isn't gonna matter at the end of this video because I decided not to use the IHS at all Debauer actually sent a direct die application tool so that I could just mount the cooler directly to the die the CPU, getting rid of that, you know, first layer of thermal interface between the die and a piece of metal. That's actually something I want to touch on very briefly. When you think about the efficiencies involved with transferring heat from the die up to the CPU cooler and then to the air, there are quite a number of roadblocks in between. It's kind of like a double layered sandwich, if you will, because you have Tim between both the IHS and the die and then Tim between the IHS and the CPU cooler. So heat is being transferred between two layers of thermal compound, which is not very efficient in its own right. It's better than using toothpaste under most circumstances, but it's still not perfect. And that can allow heat to build up over the CPU and thus increase core temperatures. That's where a tool like this comes in so handy. It allows you to eliminate one of those two inefficient layers of thermal compound, effectively lowering core temperatures. It's why delitting exists in the first place. So without further ado, I present to you stock Intel i9-7980XE thermals. You can see in IDA64 stress tests that our i9 reached about 60 to 65 degrees degrees Celsius at its hottest core. This again is at stock though, there was no manual overclock, no manual V-core, uh, but we did eventually bump the V-core up to 1.2 and manually overclock across all 18 cores to 4.2 gigahertz and uh, temperatures were not that great. We actually thermal throttled a lot uh, and that's why I don't think that these results are actually a fair interpretation of what's going on at these frequencies because the CP was actually 
throttling down its frequency when core temps became too high. I know this isn't a super controlled experiment. I don't intend for it to be. I just wanted to get the point across that overclocking 18 core Intel CPUs, I mean, really anything from the X299 lineup is just a major pain. Skylake X is not only super expensive, but it's also terrible from a thermal standpoint because Intel uses such terrible TIM between the IHS and the die of the chip. It effectively cuts these CPUs at their knees. I mean, why have unlocked multipliers if you can't overclock them because you put terrible tires on a really fast car. To me, that just makes no sense, uh, and that's why we're going to delid today. The next thing to do then is to remove the CPU from the system and then uh, use this tool here to remove the IHS from the chip. When I say chip, I'm talking about the board underneath that big metal plate. It's actually really cool and just mind-blowing to picture something like this. I mean, this is lighter than a potato chip, but there are billions of transistors packed inside this tiny little mirror that's hidden underneath this terrible thermal interface from, from Intel. Anyway, just picture it being super shiny and clean. I haven't cleaned this one yet, but it's just so light. I mean, it feels like a potato chip, but it is so dense and it's so powerful just makes you think, you know, like how far we've come in 10 or 20 years. So anyway, back to this kit. I know it looks very daunting and kind of confusing, but it actually does something very simple. So as you twist this screw right here, you can see it puts pressure on this little hinge. This hinge applies a reaction force to this huge thing here, just another chunk of metal again. And this pushes a plate that pushes against the IHS of an i9 CPU. So with the included little torque, well, not really a torque wrench, but just a little tool that you use to torque this screw here, uh, you can apply an intense amount of pressure to the IHS, eventually dislodging it. It's glued to the chip, by the way, dislodging it from the chip below. It sounds super scary. I know you probably think you're gonna just snap the whole chip because of all the pressure that you're applying to this thing, but it's actually super straightforward and I was surprised with how clean the results were. Now, once the IHS is removed, you're gonna wanna scrape off all of this extra gunk. This was what was used to bond the IHS to the chip. I use a toothpick. I just kind of scrape through it. You know, the chip itself is pretty sturdy. Just be careful. There are a lot of different components on this board, very tiny resistors and whatnot uh, that could just chip off if you're not very careful. I also recommend using nail polish or something on the like to coat all these tiny components because if you decide to use liquid metal, maybe conduct a knot, that is of course conductive. It's one of the reasons why it's such a great transfer of heat, but it could short circuit your chip uh, and create, you know, bridges. So electricity can pass from component to component where it otherwise shouldn't, that'll kill your chip, you'll be very upset. I wanted to show you guys very quick, see how this, this paste just kind of flakes off. It's almost like, <laughs> it's kind of crusty, doesn't want to stick to anything, and that just shows you how low quality it actually is. I mean, you can like mold this stuff, it's not a liquid at all. Now, if you plan to direct die mount a CPU cooler, you're going to want to remove the stock ILM. This is basically a loading mechanism for the CPU. It keeps it firmly pressed against the pins on the motherboard to ensure proper contact. The reason why you have to remove this is because once you remove the IHS of the CPU and you keep it removed for direct die mounting, uh, the total height of the CPU is going to be reduced, which means that first off, this socket thing here, this lever, is never going to actually keep your CPU secure. It's gonna be wobbling around in there because this is designed for CPUs with IHSs uh, in the i9 lineup. Also, uh, the cooler that you mount on top of this bracket here is going to be too high to make contact, direct contact with the die of the CPU. So you need a lower kit, and that is exactly what Devour offers for the i9 series. Just two plates and four torque screws, and there we go. We have direct die mountability with our i9 7980XC. Something about this picture here just looks extremely cool. So now it's time to apply MX4 thermal compound. I'm not sure exactly how to do this. I know you want to spread it evenly over the entire die, uh, so I'm just going to kind of do like a multi X pattern to ensure that enough thermal compound is covering the dies is probably a little too much and I'm sure people are gonna scream in the comment section but as long as the entire die is covered and you don't have a huge chunk of you know thermal compound between the cooler and the die of the chip we're gonna be okay and I did lift this up the first time after applying this uh, to ensure that the entire die was in fact covered with thermal compound and now for the results first impressions I was definitely impressed with the way that the CPU handled itself under idle conditions at stock we're talking room temperature here I mean there was literally no Delta between the temperature in this room and the CPU cores at idle uh, like 23 24 degrees Celsius and that again is thanks to direct die contact so that's definitely a plus but let's see how things handle now on 
under load. This is where I expect we'll see the difference. And sure enough, we did see a significant difference in the way that CPU handled itself. I was I was getting some weird error with Ida64, uh, but while the actual application was running, I saw the temperatures had leveled off quite a bit. They didn't shoot up to 90, 95 degrees immediately like they had with the die, um, you know, not being exposed directly to the cooler. So a bit of a mixed bag here. I, I don't wanna just go out and say, yeah, if you buy an Intel CPU, you should definitely delid. It's not something that I think is for everybody. In fact, it's probably more of a niche thing still, even though I definitely trust your Bowers kit way more than just like a, I don't know, a scalpel or whatever else you wanna use to scrape the IHS off of the chip. Uh, in general, his kits are very good. I do recommend them if you wanna do it, but should you do it? In my eyes, I, I'm, it's really tough for me to recommend, honestly. I mean, I don't recommend i9 to begin with, uh, but if you want to delid like a 7700K or an 8700K, I would say the only circumstance in which you should feel totally comfortable doing it is if you maybe want to upgrade anyway, and you just want to see, maybe this will be the difference between you upgrading and sticking with the current CPU that you have. Because if you lose a CPU then, if you have a terrible delid and the CPU, you know, it's cracked or it just doesn't function anymore, then you were already planning on upgrading, so not much of a loss there. Now, if you turn the question back around on me and asked me whether or not I would delid a processor, especially like this one here that's so expensive, I would tell you yes. Now, I didn't buy the 7980XE on my own. That was sent to me by a motherboard uh, manufacturer. But if I had done this myself, I've, I've bought a $1,000 processor before. Like I, I've spent a lot of money on CPUs in the past, not because I find that they're worth it, but because I am really interested in testing those components. Uh, and in, in my eyes, it's more or less an investment. I hope to eventually see that return through revenue from videos and ads you know, that we put in videos, whatever. Um, but I would have done it at least once. If it failed, I would never do it again. That's how I treat things like this. You know, I will keep doing it until I notice that my luck's run out and then I won't touch it ever again. That's kind of how, you know, how people do it when they are gambling in the casino, let's say, you know, and they keep striking it big, they keep winning, they keep winning, then they have one big loss. That's where you call it quits. You keep going until you lose and then you walk away. Now, you can do the blackjack and do that with slots, whatever, you're, usually you'll lose in slots. I don't recommend those. But if you want to have a little fun and you don't want to lose a lot of money, that's how you should do it. And that's kind of how I do it with these CPUs. I've delitted, this is now my third delid, and I have not had a failed delid attempt yet. So uh, that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. It's really up to you. I think it's worth it, especially for these hotter chips. Although i9 in general is just a terrible platform, I think. I wouldn't recommend i9 to anybody, but if you do have one laying around, delitting it will definitely make it come alive. It'll lower your temps, it'll keep your system quieter, and it'll probably increase the, the lifespan of your CPU to some extent because it's not running as hot anymore. I do want to hear from you guys in the comments section below though. What do you think about delitting? Have you done it before? Is it something you've ever considered? If so, why? If not, why not? I want to get some insight from you guys into how risk averse you are in general and if you think something like this is worth it. Give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool, dislike it. If you feel the complete opposite, click that red subscribe button. If you haven't already, you can join us if you want to pay a special like $5 a month to get like badges and all that crazy stuff. It's up to you really. And uh, be sure to stick around for more content like this on the channel. This is Science Studio. Thanks for delitting with us. By the way, a special little uh, insert here while we're waiting for the software to install. Uh, before we run the test, I'm going to show you how easy it is to delid a Z series chip. So we have the 8600K, I believe, in here. Uh, and this is good for any modern mainstream Intel processor that'll fit in this uh, back as early as I believe. We well, don't want to try to delid solder chips, but you could go back as early as Haswell if you wanted uh, and uh, use this tool to delid. So it's a very simple tool here. I mean, there's literally three parts. Uh, so you have the base, and that's where the CPU sits. I don't want to turn it because it, it just kind of sits inside there. Uh, and you can see there's space on the back as well uh, for the small little bits on the, on the actual board. Uh, and then you slide this little plate into it until it stops. There's a little ridge on one side, and this is what you're going to torque into the IHS uh, to get it to detach. So I'll show you very simply, take a little tool like this, start twisting it, you'll hear some weird sounds. And there we go. So once it gives way, you know that the IHS has been detached from the board, from the chip itself. I'm gonna unscrew this and see how it turned out. This is totally off the cuff, by the way. I didn't wanna you know, plan this, I wanted to show you uh, just how simple it is to use. So it's slightly crooked now. It's because the glue that they used to attach the IHS to the, to the chip has now been dislodged. 
and there you go. You can see crappy Intel Tim under there. We're gonna get rid of that. We're going to apply some MX4 to this as well. You could go with something much better, right? Conduct and not thermal grizzly, whatever. I'm using MX4 just because I wanna show you how terrible Intel Tim actually is. So we're gonna clean this up. We'll scrape off the gunk that they used to attach the IHS uh, to the chip, and then we'll re, uh, reapply thermal compound, better compound, and see what the temp delta is on this as well. But see how simple it is. Like it's, it's, you know, I know that you're a little worried about doing something like this to a chip, right? Because you'll void your warranty. I mean, how many times, honestly, though, are you gonna wanna return a, a CPU, right, for a, a defective chip? That rarely happens. Usually if they're defective, they're defective out of the box. They won't die randomly on you. Uh, but nonetheless, if you're comfortable with that, you can see how simple the process is. And this kit from Derbauer is the easiest I've ever used.